Welcome back to the channel. Today we are working on the new project. Got a 1980s-ish caravan for the family to make some trips away around Ireland and hopefully further afield. Um, got it very cheap so there's a few bits and pieces that need working on. Let me get you off the tripod and I'll show you around. So it's a five berth caravan and down this end here you can see we've got a dinette which changes into a bed and then we've got bunk beds over here. So the plan for this is to get rid of the top bunk and we're going to make two beds and make them suitable for baby stroke toddlers. Uh, the fridge has already been removed. It wasn't plumbed in, didn't work. We've, I've got a compressor fridge here which I plan to install, so I've got a bit of modification to get that in. The electrics are old, um, so they just need overhauling. The shower itself, I've had to remove the taps. All the taps in the van weren't working. The, the valves were all, all needed reseating. And I've actually got some taps, so I'm replacing them and replumbing it with a high pressure pump down there thanks to my shoes and an accumulator that um, should allow us to get some good pressure in the van so that's it let's get on with it so the plan now is to get rid of the bunk and then I think we're gonna start on the plumbing so we get the new tap fitted here and get the bathroom all sorted. Now I'm getting the rewiring done before the plumbing so that I can put a new wire in for the pump. The old pump used switches on the taps to turn the pump on and off and the new pump has a pressure switch in it which detects when a tap is turned on to start the pump and turns off when you turn the tap off. Here I'm unwiring the old electrical system and replacing the wires where necessary. I've got two AGM deep cycle batteries in parallel and one calcium battery which is switched using the existing battery charging system. Now it's time to put the new pump pressure regulator for the hot water system and expansion vessel in. Here I'm removing the old plumbing and installing the new tap. A swivel mixer in the kitchen and a bath mixer with shower attachment in the bathroom. The old sink goes into the bathroom fixed on three sides, sandwiched between plywood where necessary to fill any gaps. Now I'm using a bending shower curtain rail to have shower curtain on three sides of the bathroom. Here all the old silicon is removed and all the corners have new silicon put in.
start swapping all the incandescent bulbs for LEDs and replacing the fluoros for LEDs. Now it's time to make room for the old fridge. I have to enlarge the space where the old fridge was. I create a drawer from some 10mm ply and some pine to hold the fridge. Here I'm making the sides for the girls' bunks. All the things I've used will be listed in the description below. Finally, the awning clips on the outside need to be changed for new ones. They all seem to have got broken at some point in time. Okay, let me give you a quick tour of what I've done to the van. Let's start at this end. This is going to be our dinette area as I've got rid of the dinette down the other end I'll show you that later but what we've got here is the bunk we'll have a table set up in the middle which will just be a standard camp table all I've done is I've changed the light from an incandescent light to LEDs and I've also changed these spotlights on each side for LED bulbs as well and if I take you over here you can see over there I've added in a USB charger there so we can charge our phones and whatnot when we need them. And that's about all that's happened over this end. Above the door here we have a porch light which is also an awning light. I've again changed that for an LED. And then let's go down the other end of the bunks. So these are the girls bunks. All that's happened really is I've taken away the ability to have this as a dinette, taken away the tray for the table and put in a, the sidings for the bunks. This is to stop the girls from falling out. I've again changed the lights for LEDs. That's about it apart from the plumbing system. Most of the plumbing is held at this end of the caravan. This is a hot water controller. That's been changed, the old hot water system didn't work. I've replaced that identical system I had and I've also changed the pump and accumulator. So it was running a standard caravan pump system, which meant that each tap had its own switch to turn the pump on and off. And now I've changed that for a pump with a pressure switch in it so it's a 40 psi pressure switch and then I've got a accumulator to hold the pressure at about it this one set to about 35 psi and then I've got a pressure reduction which is set to 1.25 bars for the hot water system which is about the maximum that I can take let's go over to the kitchen 
So the kitchen has had the most changes to it. The fridge didn't work, so this was made up of two sides. One side with the fridge here. I'll show you that in a picture up here somewhere. And then the other side had a cupboard and a drawer for cutlery. So we've lost some of the cupboard space and the drawer has gone. And I've replaced it for a fridge we actually had. This is the compressor fridge. And it works very well off of battery only. Um, so here I've added a thermostat, which has a thermocouple on it. Originally it just had this control, which is very limited. It basically goes from off to freezing. So I've added one which gives us a temperature, digital temperature readout, and there's a thermocouple inside. This fridge is on drawer rails, which are lockable. So it locks in while we're in transportation and then we can pull it out. Underneath the fridge here there are two battery compartments. One, we have three batteries on here now. We've got two lead acid AGM batteries which are one under here and one in here and then we've got a calcium battery in here. These are all linked into the existing system. So this is all, there are, those three batteries are linked into here which is our charger and controller. I've utilised the radio switch for the pump so we can turn the pump on and off by itself and then we've got one and two batteries and we can charge it through this using the 60 amp charger. In here I've added a shunt which tells us how much power we're drawing so at the moment all the LEDs are on and the fridge is on so that's drawing three amps and this is coming out of battery two. Um, so I've also added a solar charger. This solar charger will actually balance between battery two and the battery bank of battery one. So battery two is a calcium battery and that has a higher voltage than battery one. So I'm able to use the PWM to charge one from the other. And then I can use this charger to charge either of them. In this kitchen area, we've also updated the plumbing. So all the plumbing was changed. And along with that, I've put on standard tapware from this. So this is the standard mixer tap, which gives us very good flow and with very, with low water usage. So it's just uh, much nicer than the caravan switching ones, which were very low flow and needed this switch and they were actually all broke. That takes us onto the bathroom. The bathroom, very difficult to film. The bathroom here, I've changed the, I've removed the vanity. I'll show you the vanity in a picture here. The, the vanity has been removed and I've just put on a mixer tap with a shower attachment. And that shower attachment is just a standard bathroom shower attachment there. And again, change the light for an LED. And we've put on one of these bendy shower curtains to allow us to have the shower curtain go all the way around and cover the bathroom. Uh, thanks for watching. Remember, please like, subscribe if you like what I did here. And if you didn't, you know what to do next week. Hopefully, we're back onto the bike. I'm waiting for some parts for the GL1000. I've got the carburetors. I think I've got all the parts in now, so we'll probably be rebuilding the carburetors. Thanks for watching and take care of yourselves. Whoa!